from the beginning of time, philosophers made it their mission to try and answer some of the big questions of the universe. Why are we here? How did this all come to be? Which one is cooler, Woody or Buzz? It's probably a question that you're not going to get a whole lot in life, actually. Uh, you probably get it a lot if you, like, knew me. Or if you were related to me, you've probably been asked this question at least 50 times. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and roll the intro. Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Taylor Campbell here and welcome back to Comic Crash, my little show on the internet where we talk about comic books and stuff. And it is Toy Story Month. I'm so excited. I love Toy Story Month. Uh, to catch you guys up, during the month of May, I like to try and devote that month to talking about Toy Story stuff. Uh, we talk about movies, comic books, video games, toys, just whatever, because I love Toy Story and it's been a huge influence on my life and I kind of like to be able to share it. And May, specifically because May is my birthday month and so I can I, I can talk about Toy Story if I want to. And today, the comics that we are talking about are this. Toy Story Toy versus Toy. This story takes place uh, across uh, Toy Story issues number four and five from the Boom Kids line in 2009, or you can get it collected in one volume in uh, some assembly required, which is what I've got. Now, this book, I'm really excited to tell you about this because this book is written by the same guy who did the excellent Return of Buzz Lightyear story. Uh, if you look at my channel, currently the number one video on that is my review of this book. It's a fantastic book. And one of the big hallmarks of it was that Jesse Blaze Snyder, who wrote it, just really understands how to take Toy Story and expand it. And he continues to do so in this book. So, yeah, it's a cool read. But let's go ahead and get the summary out of the way. The story starts with some supervillain named Bakitikus, who is holding uh, Bo Peep and her sheep hostage. And is also huge and destroying the entire city. Bakitikus is smashing buildings left and right. Woody and the other toys are like, oh my goodness, what is going on? I don't know how we're going to stop this thing. And Bucketicus grabs Bo Peep's sheep, Billy Goat and Gruff. They have names now, which is great. <laughs> I love that. And he grabs Billy Goat and Gruff, and he's about to eat them for breakfast. But then, out of nowhere, Buzz Lightyear of Star Command shows up and saves the sheep. Woody formulates a plan. He works with Buzz, and Buzz leads Bakitikus over to Slink, who trips him, and then we find out, of course, that Bakitikus was just Andy playing a supervillain, you know, since the very beginning, which is fun. You know, playtime, whatever, it's Toy Story. And Bakitikus is finally defeated. Andy leaves, and Bo decides that she wants to show Buzz her appreciation for saving her sheep. With a kiss. And of course, you know, Woody is all, like... He's not on board with that plan. So he hops in and breaks it up. And Bo is like, you know what? No, you don't have to be jealous of Buzz anymore. And Woody's like, yeah, no, no. And of course he does the thing that all guys do when improvising and when emotions are high, he turns it into a contest. An action figure face off with obstacles and challenges. Winner gets a kiss from Bo. Now, Bo is against this idea, of course, and she even brings it up to Woody that if he loses, she's going to start ignoring him. He's going to lose her forever if he loses this. And of course, Woody has all the confidence in the world. He's going to win this. He's not going to lose Bo. So they gather a bunch of the toys up together for what they're calling an action off. The action off has six categories. We have strength, speed, stamina, special talents, rope tricks, and flight. Now, Woody does try to make the claim that this is a non-biased, um, balanced competition, but something about him including rope tricks into that kind of throws that into doubt, but whatever, that's okay. 
And then each participant is judged by a panel of judges and given different points based on their performance. In the strength category, Robot takes the win easily, being able to bench press the entire TV. In speed, Rex actually somehow won that one because Buster showed up and started chasing him and that was all the motivation Rex needed to you know, kick it into overdrive. In stamina, Robot was able to just keep on going because he's a robot. And Woody got like second place after doing jumping jacks for a full hour. Then under special talents, Woody hosts a rodeo with the help of Buster. Buzz Lightyear shows off his karate chop action. Then we have Rex who tries to scare people with his big scary war. We have the army men who build a pyramid of themselves. And Slink who can kiss his own butt. I've met a lot of people who can kiss their own butt. That's not that special of a talent. We get to Rogue Tricks and Woody thinks that he has that competition in the bag once he is able to lasso uh, Billy Goat and Gruff, but then Buzz lassoed a teddy bear and ended up winning that competition somehow. And then during flight, of course, Buzz Lightyear repeats past success. He hops onto the Hot Wheels track and goes whoosh, whoosh, and then he latches onto the airplane and spins around and 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 then poof, lands on the bed. Of course, it's always impressive when he does that. Woody's turn is next. He hops onto the Hot Wheels car, goes around the loop, flies off the loop, grabs the airplane. The airplane snaps off its little string that it was attached to, and he flies out the window and smashes into the mailbox. It's not that great of showing, but I mean, he tried really, really hard. <laughs> the judges then go and tally the points. The top four competitors are going to make it into the final round, the final competition. Buzz Lightyear got first place, Robot got second, Rocky got third, and tied in fourth is Rex. And Woody. They both barely made it. So then Bo confronts Woody and is like, look, you can still call this off. It's not too late. You didn't quite lose yet, so you didn't lose me. Just gotta stop. This is not okay. And then Woody started like seeing things as a bit of a bigger deal than just like a simple competition. Because you see, for years, Woody has been seen as the hero in Andy's eyes. And it's almost like if Woody can't be victorious in this competition, is he really even worthy of being seen as the hero? And so like, he's going to finish the competition and he's going to give it his all, not just for him, not just for Bo, but because, you know, he has to. He's Andy's hero and he has to prove that. Then it comes to the deciding round, a great obstacle race. We have Bo Peeps Jeep, on the top shelf in the closet, and Bo herself is over on the bed. Now, the trick here is that all of the toys have to go in there, they have to get Bo's peep and bring him back to Bo peep. First person to do that wins and gets, you know, the grand prize, I guess, from Bo peep. There are no rules, every toy for himself. Rocky takes an early lead as he climbs the t-shirts, but falls once his weight pulls one of the t-shirts off of the hanger. Uh, Buzz does his favorite toy car loop trick, and he ends up just whoop, landing on the top shelf and grabbing Bo Peep's sheep. He's about to grab him, he pulls out his wings, he's going to glide off of the shelf, but then Robot grabs him and drops the sheep. Woody catches the sheep and he starts running, but Rex, you know, as proven, he is faster. He runs up and he grabs the sheep and he books it towards the bed. Robot yanks the sheep from Rex and then Rocky doinks the sheep from Robot and then Woody yanks the sheep away from Rocky and they just kind of start fighting back and forth about that. Buzz, he flies out of nowhere and just grabs the sheep right out of Woody's hands and flies right up on top of the bed and gives it to Bo Peep. So Buzz got the sheep to Bo Peep and as consequence won the competition. And he gets the kiss from Bo and Woody loses everything. And he just kind of like slumps down and he's sad. He starts to walk away. And then out of nowhere, boom, 
Bo Peep swoops in out of nowhere and plants a nice big one on Woody. And he's like, what was that about? I didn't win. But I lost, exclaims a very confused sheriff. I don't love you because you saved my sheep, says Bo. I just love you, but don't do anything like that again. Yes, ma'am. Besides, continues Bo, Buzz said he'd watch the sheep tonight. Woody, you sly dog! So let's go ahead and talk about the writing. Jesse Blaze Snyder just kind of comes out of nowhere and expands the Toy Story universe, and it is so great. Like, you have to consider that this book was released, like, just around Toy Story 3. So he didn't have all of the information that we have now. Uh, he found a way to expand Robot, who was just this small side character showed up for only a few seconds. I think his total runtime is less than five minutes. It has to be. And somehow made it a very compelling and interesting character. And then we have Rocky, who he further expanded Rocky from his previous project with the return of Buzz Lightyear, but turned Rocky into like this 80s action hero. He even says a couple of lines in here that are ripped straight out of 80s action movies. But then we have the way that he expanded on Bo Peep, which is fantastic because uh, at this time we didn't have Toy Story 4. We didn't have like what Bo Peep actually was. We had less than you know 10 minutes of screen time with her. We don't know what she was at at that point. But he just took the character and decided to run with it and make some bold choices. And what we got was a really interesting, competent, confident Bo Peep that really feels like she could be second in command if Woody and Buzz were gone on some kind of adventure. We also have the main character in the story, Woody, who has his own growing like character reasoning that we have. Like his reasonings from the beginning of the story really change as he starts losing competitions and as he starts losing points during the story. And it's like, this is great. It's great character work. It's worthy of being part of the Toy Story series, like easily. So the story is great. Let's talk about the art. The art is interesting because depending on whether or not you read this as a single story or if you got it in the collected version like I have, you're going to get different art. Uh, the single's first half, so issue number four, was done by Clint Hilinski, and it feels stiff, it feels uncomfortable, it feels flat, the colors feel flat and gross and contrasting, like, awfully against each other, and lifeless. Like, it, it, it doesn't look great. It looks really bad, actually. Uh, it's, it hurts to look at. I mean... To an extent, I could see that, like, you know, he was trying to emulate how the first Toy Story movie specifically looked, but it just doesn't feel good to look at. However, we get the second half of that and the entirety of the story in the collected volume, and it was drawn by Tanya Roberts. And it's great. It's like this really bright, expressive, cartoony you know, vibe to it that just feels really good to look at. It's not anywhere close to how Toy Story actually looks, and I think overall, character design-wise, I think I prefer how they looked in The Return of Buzz Lightyear, with a little bit more movie proportions, but it doesn't look bad. I could look at it for a long time and really enjoy it. It looks like an animated series. In fact, if I were to go out on a limb, I would say that this is the best that the Toy Story books have looked in comics. Uh, it doesn't look flat, it doesn't look boring, it looks like they have put some thought into it, and it just, it looks fun. So, my recommendation, um, when you go out to look for this book, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend trying to find the single issues. I would say just go ahead and find the collected volume. Like I said, the volume is called Some Assembly Required. You can find it at some used bookstores, some used book sites. Uh, it's been out of print for a while though, so you kind of have to keep your eyes open for it. But that's been the case with all of these Boom Kids uh, stories. Speaking of recommendations, if you liked 
toy versus toy, then I would recommend that you check out Boom Kids' other Toy Story books and their other Pixar books. They're fantastic, they feel like they belong in the universe. Definitely worth a check. So, that's what I have for you today. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you read this book? Do you have any other Toy Story recommendations that you would like me to cover or to explain to you or show off? Go ahead and leave me a thought in the comments below, and until next time, thank you for joining me. Have a great day, and remember to always be your best self.